the Saints will challenge the Bucks for the NFC South this year. Yeah, it's a major overreaction, but if we're speaking to how, you know, some people are going to be talking about this game, um, the Saints did look great. I mean, offense was on point. Devers, Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, Robert Tanyan, I mean, they were no factor whatsoever. Um, and who knows? The Saints really could run and be the second team in this division. Now, we did just have a lot of things happen with the Saints, losing Marshawn Lattimore, centers out. Uh, six coaches now? Five? Yeah, yeah six, six coaches, one nutritionist, and one player. Yeah, there you go. All either by COVID or injury. And, you know, a lot of people are going to jump on this but with it being week one, it seems like the whole you know factor with Aaron Rodgers being super dramatic in the offseason and overall just, first of all, what was up with the hair? The hair was horrible from Aaron Rodgers. I mean, I was making fun of him the whole time with the hair and then him playing the way he did, um, absolutely airmailing a couple of interceptions. I mean, the Saints look like they're in a good position to make a run potentially for the top of the NFC South. Now, if we're talking about fun there, yes, but let's keep it with the facts with the New Orleans Saints. I think they could be a second place team, but with the way the Panthers kind of looked, and we're going to talk about that coming up, that coming up, they'll be third place. They'll at least finish better than the Falcons this year, 100%. I mean, I could buy that they could probably contend with the Panthers for a second, but for them challenging Tampa for the top of the NFC South, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, that's a ridiculous overreaction. Green Bay is a chronic, terrible road football team. It was crazy hot in Jacksonville where they played. These aren't excuses. These are actually facts. Green Bay sucks on the road. Yep. I mean, they, they played true to form. Between all the distractions that they had coming in, Aaron Rodgers not being with the team, all of his Jeopardy nonsense. He came out there looking like Steven Seagal. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> he played terrible. But even to the point that it looked like the Saints offense looked great, the defense was putting them in the greatest positions. Like between the interception returns, their returns off of special teams, Jameis was dealing with short fields the entire game. I mean, to the tune of 93 yards through three quarters. He wasn't blazing them up. Right. The fields were crazy short. Yep. He was 13 of 19 for 93 yards and four touchdowns at the end of the third quarter. He wasn't throwing the ball that much. Right. It was just very advantageous. The team was clicking as far as the defense was putting him in great positions. I don't think we'll see more five touchdown performances out of Jameis right. because that would require that the defense show up and the opposing team's offense be terrible. Yep. Like that's not going to keep happening. Right. So next week, they get a reality check. They get the Carolina Panthers. They're not injured. They're not coming off of all kind of off-season drama. Yep. And they look good last week. So they're going to actually have to play. This is a division rival. And this will actually tell us a lot towards which team is going to do more towards making a push to try to get that number two spot in the division. Because yeah. Tampa's playing Atlanta. So this will give somebody a strong two spot or even a possibility of like well, one of them, one of them is going to be two and zero. Oh. It'll be sitting right there with Tampa. So whichever it is, which I assume is probably going to be Carolina, that that's going to tell us a story.